night, he fights an opponent with vast experience going the distance. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for baby Joe Macy against New Yorker Monty Barrett. And you can see that Barrett at 32 is two years older than Macy. He's also two inches taller. The arm length advantage, surprisingly, an inch and a half, measured from the armpit to the end of the fist, goes to Macy. And he outweighs Barrett, whom he met as amateurs several years ago, by 22 and a half pounds. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The baby Joe Macy, Monty Barrett fight is scheduled for 10 rounds using the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. The three knockdown rule is in effect. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight. In case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 10th and final round. Jim. First to enter will be Monty Barrett, the former high school football star from Queens, had an excellent start to his career, ultimately came a cropper twice, but only against fighters half a head taller, or half a foot, I should say, taller than Macy. Vladimir Klitschko, 6'7", and Lance Whitaker, 6'8", against fighters Macy size. Barrett's unbeaten, and nine times in his career, Larry, he's gone either 10 or 12 rounds, something Joe Macy has yet to do. Well, Macy has not even completed nine rounds, which will give you an idea of what Barrett may try to do tonight to extend Macy. He's had a rough year and a half. His jewels were robbed. His stocks went down. He lost a lot of money. He says he's more motivated than ever now to try to get into the inner circle of heavyweight contenders. The world fighting, but once you say you're in Madison Square Garden, it takes a lot out of you. In that dressing room, you can melt. And for tonight, from Boone Kirkman to Buster Mathis, I've seen them all fold because of the dressing room in Madison Square Garden. And that question applies really more to Joe Macy tonight than it does to Monty Barrett. Barrett has been in this building. Macy has been fighting most of his major triumphs in the cocoon of Buffalo, where he is totally idolized. You don't get used to it, though. You don't get used to it. Well, we shall see what happens to Baby Joe tonight. In his last appearance against Devaro Williamson in Buffalo, with the spotlight of the nation on him for the first time, he performed spectacularly, knocking Williamson out in the first round. Which, which, uh, Cruz made a comment, Jim, at the time. He's proven that he's too good for the minor leagues. We don't know if he's good enough for the major leagues. I think tonight we may find out if there is a spot in the lineup for him. But if not, whether he's a cleanup hitter or not. How confident is he? Yesterday we said to Joe Macy, well, what do you think Barrett might be thinking tactically? Macy looked at us and said, I don't know what Monty's thinking, but I'm thinking he's in trouble. We're thinking right now, we're going to go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the pre-fight introductions. Oh. And now I'm told that Jimmy Lennon isn't quite ready to do the pre-fight introduction, so you get a fuller look at Macy as he steps into the ring, looking calm and collected as was the case yesterday. And now Jimmy Lennon moves to the center of the ring, and we are ready for the pre-fight intros. Let's go to the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden, here in New York City. We have a big night of action in store for you, and it's all brought to you by Duva Boxing and Vitaly Klitschko's promoter, Universum Box Promotions, in association with the undisputed king of beers, Budweiser, Bets.com, and Pacific Entertainment Group. This bout coming away also provided courtesy of Tony Holden Productions. Introducing to you our judges scoring the bout from ringside from Floral Park, New York, Joe Dwyer, from Garden City, New York, Arthur Mercanti Sr., and from Albany, New York, Tom Shrek. 
Our third man of the ring, the referee in charge of the action, we have Mike Ortega. All right, fans, here we go with a 10-round heavyweight special attraction. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing a blue trunks, fighting out of and representing his hometown of Queens, New York. He weighed in at a ready 215 pounds. His fine record stands at 29 wins, two losses, 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing Monty, two guns, Barrett. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the red corner in this 10-round special attraction, wearing blue trunks with white trim, fighting out of his home of Buffalo, New York. He weighed in at 237 and one half pounds, a highly decorated amateur champion, undefeated in his campaign in the professional ranks with the record of 27 wins, no losses, 25 big wins coming by way of knockout, ranked the number four heavyweight in the world by the WBC. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard-hitting and undefeated baby, Joe. Macy. And once again, the referee in charge, Mike Ortega, now to give instructions, 10 rounds of boxing schedule. Okay, gentlemen, we went over the rules. I want a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. Joe Macy's father, Jack, says that in the kind of blizzard conditions we have outside the garden, they grow flowers in Buffalo. We want to know if they grow heavyweights as well. Macy's last two fights have produced first round knockouts. That seems unlikely against Barrett. But Barrett himself says, I don't think it'll be a long fight. I'm gonna knock Macy out. You wonder why Barrett would be thinking that way, given his on-the-record advantages in having gone the distance and understanding how to finish fights. Baby Joe doesn't have any experience going a long distance. This is not the night to try to go and get some experience. If you can punch, do it. Barrett said, that when he sparred with Macy and the amateurs many years ago, the one thing he remembers is Macy's punches have pop. Barrett said he's one of those guys with heavy hands. Macy's better be get ready to hold on. Don't be ashamed. You get hurt to hold on. Barrett's got the long reach. He's not using his jab when he should be. Barrett content to stand at a distance. Macy looking for ways to get in, and he lands a right cross. Right on the button. When you're fighting a puncher, you're always supposed to be doing something if there's no more than just moving out of the way. Don't let him sit and think about his power. Barrett tried for the big right cross himself. Don't push him. Don't now push he's thrown three straight right hands. Macy taking one and ducking two. Another hard right hand over the top by Barrett. Macy seems unaffected. Barrett's trying to mix up power, that, which is not a good idea. He's countering Macy's jab with his right cross okay. and landing it. Macy's been uh, going to the body, Barrett wisely, waiting for that to happen, and came over with his right hand. Now Barrett throwing a hard left hook. Looks as though he's not interested in a boxing match here. Wants to slug it out with Joe Macy. If you got a good long left jab and a good snapping right hand, why go out and fight a guy? And that's what Barrett is doing. He's trying to match power with a puncher. Macy gets inside, gets a chance to land. Backs Barrett up with a left hand. And I think he dazed Barrett momentarily at least. Another left hook lands for Macy. This time he led with it. Let's go. When you got a good strong jab, you can really bust the guy up. And Barrett may be doing that with 
Baby Joe as the fight go on. Popping him with that jab to swell his eyes up. Macy's trying for another first round knockout to go with the two that he's already racked up this year. They're gonna trade some leather. Another left hook lands for Barrett. Macy lands a left hook in return. Barrett leads with the right hand to end the round. A good round, especially for Macy. Water, 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 water. Listen, lay back. Listen, Joe. Relax. Relax. You're trying it too hard, right? You're trying it too hard. Now, why you use the jab a little more now, right? Can you do it? You got to jab in his fucking chest. You get in that jab, but this shit jab. You ain't jabbing, you're bullshitting. Jab this guy. Like, jab, this is the fight now, man. This, man. This, this, this is the fight. This is what you trained six weeks ago in the gym. Do what you've been working on, man. Macy doing damage with his overhand right, but especially with that left hook. Right there. Classic left hook follows through with his shoulders. Copy box numbers in round one. Macy 18 out of 57. Barrett 6 out of 30. You listen to the talk in Barrett's corner and it's clear they want him to box. He trained to box. They expected him to go in and jab and move. He didn't do it. Now for Baby Joe Massey, his corner should just refresh him when that bell ring. Don't talk too much. Just keep your punch and refresh. He needs his power. Good left inside by Barrett. Wait. Barrett is holding, which is good advice. Good strategy. Hold on when you can't do anything else. The interesting equation you saw on the tail of the tape. Barrett is taller. Macy has the longer arms. And there you see that Macy is able to land with his jab from the outside. Break, step back, step back, step back. It's interesting, Jim. In his street clothes, Macy does not present a picture of a powerful looking guy. When you see him in trunks, you know, he looks like a linebacker. He is uppercut by Barrett. Two in a row. Two uppercuts. That's what you want to punch you to get a guy to start punching you back so you can mix it up with him. And I think that works for baby Joe. Maybe Joe Macy said a fascinating thing about Monty Barrett yesterday. Barrett Macy hurt Barrett, by a hurt right Barrett with a right hand. Don't push you him, want don't a guy to start him. hitting you so he can get confidence that he can punch with you. And that's what Barrett did. You got to box the puncher. Joe Macy said an interesting thing about Barrett yesterday. He said if you want to see the best of Monty Barrett, go after him and fight him. He said Barrett's the kind of fighter that... If you fight him, you'll bring out the fight in him. If you stand back and try to box him, he'll loaf. Yeah. Right. Nevertheless, Macy wants to go fight him anyway. Barrett's taste some of that power now. He's going to have to do some mighty good thinking to stay out of trouble. The referee is not going to help you, Barrett. Swelling outside the left eye of Monty Barrett. Just a little mouse. Maybe from a Macy right hand. Macy catches him with a little left hook again. I would Macy be doesn't have the best left jab, so he best stay away from the gap jabbing contest. I would be surprised if Barrett's legs feels like he just drank three dry martinis. Good body shot by Macy. Set up a little left hand inside. Barrett with a hard right hand uppercut. Now all of that punching that Barrett does works against him because you're playing right in the hand of a puncher. Got through combinations and move. Right. No, no, no. Step back clean. Step back clean. Stay off the top of him, okay? Don't push him down like that. Go. Hey. In the first two rounds, Monty Barrett seems to have fought more out of pride and stubbornness than ring intelligence. We'll see where it goes from here. On, Meanwhile, listen, next see. Thursday, HBO you know Latino's Boseo de Oro returns with Mike Enchando versus Gregorio Vargas. Next Saturday, pay-per-view five title fights featuring Ricardo Mayorga, Bernard Hopkins, Hasim Rahman against John Ruiz. January 24, live on HBO, Arturo Gatti back in action facing Gianluca Branco. 
January 31, Boxing After Dark. Antonio Margarito, one of the welterweight titleists, against Hercules Clibelis, plus Rafael Marquez against Pete Fresina. HBO, building legends, one round at a time. Swallow, swallow. You hear what I'm telling you, Monty? Breathing, breathing. Let go, Bobby. Go to finish some of that program. I said it with the jab. Stick the jab. If Barrett wasn't in the good condition he appears to be in, he might not have survived the first two rounds. But in the second round, one copy box number is interesting. Barrett landing nearly half of his power shots, 8 of 17. Macy also landing eight power shots. He threw 27. Again, as you pointed out, George, Barrett wants to punch with a puncher. Now he's gotten a little scared, Barrett has. Which, for, which will make for a better boxing match for him. Fear makes you box. Massey's corner's got to be careful. Just let the man know he's not getting in a good power shot because his opponent is too tall. Don't get discouraged. Don't grab him. Barrett has kept his head. by Macy. Kept his head really high. It's hard to get in a good punch. Sometimes young fighters think, oh, I can't do it. Right hand to the chest for Macy. Crowd oohs and ahs when Macy lands because he commits so much to his power punches. Big left hook by Barrett. Macy takes it well. And that's discouraging to a boxer when he starts missing the puncher. Macy willing to take a little leather to try to get inside and hack away at Barrett now. Barrett missing over the top of the right hand. Macy clips him with the left inside. Barrett keeps leaning on that left hook, which is not smart. Massey can hit with that left hook. You don't what do you mean when you said that? He's leaning on it. Yeah, he's throwing too many left hooks. He's going to get caught in the exchange. Don't hook a hooker. From what we've seen, I think the left hook is Macy's best punch. And Macy can take you out with a hook, so you don't want to get in a hooking battle. Keep it to the jab and right hand. Boy, you know he can take it out of a puncher when a big guy leans on his neck like Barrett is doing. Barrett clips Macy with the right hand. <laughs> Left Wait. hook, glancing blow. Solid left hook by Macy to the body. Misses with the right hand upstairs. And now blood from the left eye of Monty Barrett. A little grin on Macy's face as he sees the blood emerging. Sit down, sit down. Monty Barrett's cut man is Jimmy Glenn. Outstanding trainer and cut man who'll do a good job. Here's that right hand. Whoa. Talking about, if we've often talked about fighters who punch from the back seat. They're always moving away from a punch. He's punching so far into the front seat, he's almost on the hood. Listen, now. It's, 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 it's ugly. Uh -huh. start, start working with open because you're right. You heard Macy's trainer, Juan de Leon, brother of a former cruiserweight champion who was popular around this area. Also, former 130-pound world champion Tracy Harris-Patterson, son of Floyd Patterson, assisting in Monty Barrett's corner. 
Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim, not so terribly hard to score. Three rounds to nothing, 30 to 27, baby Joe Macy. Jim, I gotta tell you something. Monty Barrett just can't seem to get into a rhythm. Obviously, what he's trying to do is, is to drop the right hand down on, on Joe Macy, and he's been missing him by a mile. So, good defense by Joe Macy, good offense, good pressure by Joe Macy, and then the clean the harder shots. I like what Macy, Massey is doing. He's charged in a few rounds. Now he's taking a break. Bounce. Get back. Get your reserves back up for your punching power. Very few punchers know how to do that. Macy may feel that, just as Harold Letterman suggested, he's won the first three rounds. So he's got a cushion and can now begin to think a little bit more strategically about how to go about what comes next. Well, yeah. in addition to that, Barrett is being more defensive now. Jimmy Glenn stopped the bleeding in Monty Barrett's left eye. Macy lands the right. The heads collided again. Since the opening minutes of the first round. Hard to imagine to he'll ever fight any other way than that. Barrett missing again with the right, but lands the left hook. Macy ducking the right that came behind it. Has that right handed Macy's been trying to get in there. Barrett better be careful. Barrett wins his right hand from the outside. Macy throws his straight up the middle. Whenever Barrett gets on the ropes, he drops his hand instinctively. This is the time that Macy want to get him. You're going to have to jump on him right as soon as his back touches the rope. Time. Quick left hook by Joe Macy to punctuate round four. Meanwhile, Vitaly Klitschko warming up in his dressing room, hoping to make a big show tonight to galvanize public support for the idea of another challenge against Lennox Lewis, a big pay-per-view date that might mark the end of Lewis's career. That's where Vitali wants to be after his date with Kirk Johnson tonight. Johnson says, hey, I'm the guy who ought to be fighting Lewis. If I'd gotten my chance to fight him in June, I'd have knocked him out in four rounds. Get with that, man. Your children, man. All right? Yeah. You gotta, this, this guy here came to take up. In round three, Macy landed that punch on the eye, and that was followed by this collision. Hard to tell which one of those blows caused the cut over Barrett's left eye. They're fighting at a pedestrian pace. Macy threw 39 punches in the fourth round. Barrett threw 41. Heavyweights often fight at about that rate a punch output, though sometimes up to 50 or 60. Macy in particular has been more active than that in some previous fights. But he's taking his time against Monty Barrett. Barrett is, he doesn't mind extending this fight. He's not looking for a quick knockout. Macy better be well of that. Time your punches, plan your work and work a plan. Barrett with the right hand, oh, and Macy oh, lands him. The rules kept Barrett from hitting the canvas, but it's a legitimate uh, knockdown for Macy. Six, seven, and we told you, Barrett yeah, wins his right from the outside. Macy comes right up the middle. That means Baby Joe gets there first. Now it's evident that the Baby Joe can punch. Now Barrett wants to try to even it up right away. As he gets aggressive again. Got to be careful. Archie Moore says sometimes when these guys are hurt, 
They can do more damage to you. You'll wake them up and they'll hurt you. A finisher, hard to see. Well, he's not being reckless. Barrett has turned southpaw on him to make it more difficult. He's turned his, put his right foot in front of him. Yep, southpaw stands for Barrett. He's a survivor, that's what Barrett is. Watch the backhand. Now Massey's got to understand to lead with your right, then come back with your hook. In 31 previous fights, Monty Barrett has been knocked out once. That was by Vladimir Klitschko, who knocked him down five times. Interestingly, Macy said, you know, that was Monty's best performance because he fought with heart, he kept coming at Vladimir, he tried as hard as he could. Evidently, Massey's corner scouted Barrett, but didn't put the, this, this part in that he's a southpaw. South he south yeah. yeah, because Baby Joe has been hesitant ever since Barrett went into the southpaw stance. Macy has got to understand now, you got to leave with your right. Not many southpaws in the heavyweight division, so fighters like Macy don't have all that much experience facing a guy who stands this way. If you, if Macy can just leave with that right hand and come back with a hook, he can get him in the same position. Remember, there's only been one southpaw heavyweight champion in history. And Michael Ortega is going to rule that a slip, right not here. a knockdown. No, no, Barrett's no, looking no, at Macy no. as if to say, see, I knocked you down just like you knocked me down. But it's ruled a slip or a push. But Macy was throwing combination, which is good. Lost his balance. All right, Joe. You know what? Leave that. No. Barrett got a little bit aggressive. Right hand straight over the jab. And what was impressive to me there, George, was it almost looked like the jab started first, and yet Macy beat him to the punch. <laughs> All night he's been waiting to get range for that right hand. Finally, Barrett was low enough to receive yeah, him it. Double it then. He's been too Love tall all night. You don't reach him with the first one, you reach him with the second one. And then you get to him, you hit him one punch, you don't know what's going on. You got to come up, come up, Barrett's trainer in the corner there, the old guy, Al Davis, 89. And fought clears in the bell, incidentally. Yeah, fought in the early 30s. Calls Barrett pig-headed, and Barrett says, oh, he calls me worse than that. <laughs> pig-headed because he, his intuition is to fight even when he should be boxing. Such as tonight. But you are who you are. Well, Barrett was a big time football player in high school. Now Mace is trying to be a counter puncher. You don't want to do that. Just go on and take lead to the fight. Barrett back in the conventional stance after finishing the last round standing with the other foot forward. Right hand lands for Barrett. Second one short. Now Macy says, okay, let's trade. I'll show you my right hand. Barrett's doing some boxing now. Jab, get out of the way. Jab, get out of the way. No, but I think Barrett has now decided that he's got to do some damage because he's way behind in this fight. And he's not going to win it by boxing. Mas Macy is starting to move away a little bit. You don't want to chase Macy. That's one thing. You run into something heavy. If he moves away from you, you just stand your ground if you bear it. And let him let, go. Let him come back. <laughs> Barrett misses over the top of the right hand. Macy gets in a little left to the body. What surprises me that Macy is able to weave away from so many shots. Real instinctively, he got a little bob and weave there. Now Macy's head stays still for a moment. Barrett pops him with the jab. Macy ducks a couple, tries a left inside, lands the right from distance. Step out, step out, step back, step back. Let's go. 
Mason's been doing all the fighting, so you really hope that his corner can refresh him. Ooh. The big right hand. Arrett tries to shake it off. It didn't land quite flush, and but I think he had a slightly open glove when that landed. Now you got to go back and say to yourself, I've knocked him down with a straight right hand. I've hurt him with another one. Go back to what's getting you over. He's hurt now, Ben. He just hurt him with another right hand. Yeah, that, that was a punch around the ear that seemed stick to that Barrett walked into. Affect his equilibrium. You got to stick to what's doing good in tonight. Hit him with right, right hands. hands are doing it. Oh, right in the down. Macy with a right hand barrage to end the six. Four rounds left in the fight. Joe Macy perhaps headed toward going the distance for the first time in his career, but with a hefty lead on the scorecard. Okay, round seven coming up. Monty, where, where are you from? Oh, Queens. Okay, good. Raise your left hand now. Beautiful. Okay. Monty, you're yeah. getting hit because you pull it out. You can't fight it out. Out. sitting there. Round seven. Give me some water. Yeah. You've got to fight. Has he got enough for you to fight? Yeah. Then, you, then let it go. Yeah, seven rounds. Um, he's counting my job. Counting my ass. He ain't then double shit. it then. The man is tired too. If you get down, fight like this, where you fight, you fight. Hold on, hold on. Deep breath. If you fight like this, where you fight, you fight. So you're doing combinations. You got it too far. Is it little? Keep it up. You got a little more. Little more. Listen, and, and, and he, this motherfucker with a rope. There's the right hand once again. That time, as he was coming in, it seemed to clinch. He thought he might as well throw a punch. And it landed. You see him amused. Joe Macy goes to George by seven. Al Davis. Yeah, because his, his fighter told him he's countering my left jab. <laughs> now Macy goes down on a right hand by Barrett. As Macy gets over aggressive and makes a mistake. First time in Macy's career that he's gone to the canvas. Well, so Monty George, Barrett said, produces something. George, you said before the fight, you want to see guy, whether guys can deal with adversity. That's what we want to look for today. We're not protected fighters. Can a heavyweight get up off the canvas and show you his stuff? Well, both of them have gotten up now. And like Barrett did after the first knockdown, Macy's trying to show that there are no ill effects. Meanwhile, Barrett clips in the end with a left and a right. Macy's getting a look of frustration on his face, like, why am I making these mistakes? There's some swelling over Macy's eye that's causing him a little confusion. Left eye, product of Barrett's right hands. He also looks a little winded, or maybe that's just right, a, an illusion. His mouth is open. He hasn't gone this far in a fight in a few years, I think. This is the fourth time in his career that he's gone to the seventh round. Been seven rounds once, eight rounds once, part of nine rounds another time. Break, break, step back. And now this. Watch your heads inside. Watch your heads. Well, he's knocked the guy down, hurt him a few times. You get out there and you think, I got him now, and you get caught. That's, it happens every time. That's and called the heavyweight division, right? Right. And in Madison Square Garden, this happened to me once. I thought, surely I'm going to win. And there I am holding on myself. Now Barrett is beginning to dominate break. this round as he hammers Macy with a good hard left to the body. Now Macy is shucking and jiving. Don't do that. Don't give uh, the, your man, your opponent any courage like that. Don't shuck and jive with him if you're Macy. Barrett is just fighting the way you want to fight now. Barrett's trying to end the fight with one big right hand. Comes back with a left hook and flips Macy with that. And a huge seventh round for Barrett. Now Macy tries to even the score just a little bit in this round. This is the toughest round of Macy's career. How Barrett is using doing? the uppercuts now. Uppercut. And Macy fighting back. Backs Barrett up with a big left hand. Crowd responds. In the big house, you got to fight back. A lot of Buffalonians made the trip down from Buffalo to see their guy. Their voices prominent in the crowd in Madison Square Garden. Barrett in a corner, Macy stalking, seventh round comes to an end. Baby Joe Macy was knocked down for the first time in his career. Listen. Listen, Joe. 
Listen, you th you're trying too hard. I want you to start using your jab. Okay. We're going for round eight now, all right? Okay. Eight round. Eight round now. Box, Got it? Box this guy for Move this round. Box this box, round. Move. Box this guy for a round. Debris. Stretch your leg. Listen, and, and when you get hit hard, you hurt. You get hard. Don't try to play hard. Move. Coming in with a left hook, walking into a short left hand by Monty Barrett. Not much because he ran into it. That's what makes it even harder. Yep. Well, Barrett's walked into a couple of punches. Now Macy walked into <laughs> one. Turnabout is fair play. Barrett's got to go for a knockout. Round eight of the schedule 10. Harold, how do you have it coming into the eight? Okay, Jim. 68-63. Six rounds to one, baby Joe Macy. Monty Barrett may have run out of rounds. He may need a knockout to win this fight. You got to give my, uh, baby Joe Macy an extra point for knocking Monty Barrett off his feet in round five. Give Monty Barrett an extra point for knocking Joe Macy off his feet in round seven. Six to one, Macy. Barrett's better go for the knockout. You don't want to get Macy's courage back up again. And you took it away from him, keep it away. All right, right hand by Barrett. Swinging for the fences now. He knows he needs to go for a knockout. And, of course, as Barrett opens up, he'll create opportunities for Macy to try to retaliate with power punches. Macy's got that swelling over the left eye. That's bothering him. Maybe he's never been in that position before. But you don't want to let Barrett get his courage up, Barrett. Make him move backwards if you're Mason. Meanwhile, Macy continues to back up and allow Barrett to come forward. And with each step forward, Barrett's confidence is slightly reinforced. The Macy contingent in the crowd, nervous. Audibly. See, Macy did not go to the body enough. There's a good right hand by Macy. First rule of a puncher, go to the body. In case the guy gets stronger, he's too weak to knock you out. Macy didn't go to the body. Monty Barrett of Queens Welcome down. trying to pull off a hometown upset of Buffalo's Joe Macy. He's called Baby Joe Macy, but skeptics in Buffalo have said he's been babied Joe Macy. You can't say he's been babied anymore. And Macy walked into a Barrett right hand. And right, once again out, seems out. slightly stunned. Barrett landed another big left. Macy's left eye is closing up. That's going to be the thing tonight. Can his corner keep that eye open? Well, he's got... One of the two or three best cut men in the sport in Al Gavin working in his corner. That eye is not cut, it's swollen. Barrett's got a cut, and his corner closed it up real good for him. Jimmy Glenn did a great job, as we said he would. They fought eight of a scheduled ten. Meanwhile, Kirk Johnson warms up in his locker room. Two weeks before June 21, Kirk Johnson had to drop out of his scheduled fight with Lennox Lewis because of a torn pectoral muscle. He says he thought he was over the disappointment until he watched Vitaly Klitschko flirt with a chance to become a heavyweight champ against Lewis. It sent him into depression, Maybe thinking nice. of what might have been. You know how to work loose. All right? Keep your hands up, move your hand out, right? Time to what? To stick and move. Da, da, not too far. Start working with the right hand. He come to the right hand. Chin down. Sit down. And we're gonna bang down the motherfucking dust around. Come on. Come on, yeah, show me. Yo, you got him. You heard him. Hit him to the body. Check his out. Let's go. Hit him to the body. Set that right hand up. Hit him to the body. It's overhand right by Barrett. High on the forehead. Barrett is not a strong puncher. Um, that's why he's gone to distance so much. But he's a good enough puncher that if you walk into a punch, you'll feel it. 
And he's proven Macy's point that he'll fight best when somebody fights hard against him. Macy fought hard against Barrett. He's brought out the fight in Barrett. In the last round, the eighth, Macy only threw 27 punches by Kopkevach's count, landing only four. Barrett, 13 out of 38, easily, it seems, winning the round. The judges are all from New York State. Joe Dwyer, the famous Arthur McCanty Sr., and Tom Shrek. Barrett had his man out of it. Now he's moving away and giving Macy more courage. Could have gotten a knockout if he really pursued it. Barrett could have. Now Macy's got his courage and his power. Of course, he keeps the power. Barrett lands a left hook. Macy's been much more self-protective since the knockdown. Throwing fewer punches. Backing away more. Trying to stay out of harm's way, but still getting harmed more than he's harming Barrett. Boy, when you've never gone 10 rounds and you start watching the ring people go by with those number that you've never seen before, 8, 9, 10, it's frightening for a puncher, I can tell you that. If they go to the final bell in this round, it'll be further than Joe Macy's ever gone in a fight. Macy better hope his lead on the scorecards was as solid as Harold Letterman makes it. There's Barrett been, seemed not to have any fear at all. There's been a role reversal in this fight, which started out with Barrett as the boxer and Macy as the aggressor. And Macy is doing pretty well, actually, in this boxing mode. So he does have versatility. Look and see number nine, number ten. <laughs> oh, that's scary because you wonder about yourself. Macy shoots a right hand and lands it. He seems to have steadied himself a bit here in the ninth. I remember the first time I saw that green car saying number nine. Boy, was I afraid. The left eye is Macy's lead eye, George. Can he see Barrett's right hand coming? But so far, he can probably see, but it's going to get worse. Well, he's only got 3 minutes, 21 seconds to go in the fight. So how much worse can it get? He's got to take the aggression, though. Macy got to get out there and show the world that he's the top boy. It'll be a victory for Barrett just to survive. What would you tell Baby Joe going into the tent? Go fight him or stay Go away? Go fight him. Go fight him. We need a champion now, a guy who can get up and win the 10th round. Got to pay off right now. It's got to pay off. You got to go out there. Every time you hit this man with a hook, the man go, go running, falling down, the falling down. You don't feel no pain. Just stand up and look at it. Double that left hand. You acting like you're scared, and I'm telling you, the motherfucking truth. Double your acting like you not fighting. When you get out, throw your jab, walk into the rock. Just take the jab and hit him. He's trying to hit you with the right hand. That's all the hell he's got. Come on, Joe. You're a better fighter than this. Hey, show me. Show me. Come on. All right. Shorten him up on inside. Shorten him up. And double that left hand up. That was Al Gavin, the cut man, who said to Macy, come on, Joe, you're a better fighter than this. He still threw only 30 32 punches in the ninth round, allowing Barrett to throw 40. George Foreman said it. Joe Macy needs to fight and win the 10th round. Barrett had this man on the hook, could have knocked him out in the eighth round, and he backed away from the fight. Joe Macy has not fought in a fight that went to the judges in more than five years. October of 98, a full rounder. That was the last time he went the distance. Barrett's fighting now the way Al Davis asked him to. And the crowd hey, is beginning to back the local fighter. And Macy held on. That's smart now. Most guys who are punchers don't even have those ex instincts. Hold on. Try to get you one good shot in there. Break. Go back. Break. Let's go, Bucks. If any of the judges gave, gave some early rounds to Barrett, this could conceivably be close. Hard right hand by Macy. And he did it by boxing. And he'll get off his neck. Oh, 
Macy goes home and studied his film. If this fight is over and he doesn't lose by knockout, he can always say, I can box too. Big right hand by Macy. Right. Barrett is hurt. Wobbles Walk Barrett again. Down. Finish strong if you're backhand, Barrett. Backhand. Don't give up trying to get a knockout if you're Barrett. Wild rising for both fighters. Right, right, right. Both fighters right. looking right. for a right. knockout right. shot. Right. Macy demonstrating now that he's genuinely bothered by that swollen left eye. And he's starting to lead in with his jab, throw punch. Come on, work out. Let's go. Look out, Joe. Thing about Barry, you need to get aggressive, but when he does, Macy hits him hard. Which tends to discourage you a little bit, George. When someone is <laughs> chasing a guy around and he hits you. It's been a close round so far, and it could be meaningful on the scorecards. Whatever happens in the last 30 seconds of the fight could conceivably be significant. Barrett just seems to think he's too far ahead on points for some reason. He's not throwing enough punches to get it done. Now he's throwing power punches. Macy's two right hands were the biggest punches of this round so far, but Barrett's throwing more. Macy seems staggered. Barrett lands the right hand. Barrett's better go for it. You better go for it. They brought Macy down the stretch. One punch. Both fighters will raise their arms now. I thought Macy won the fight. And it was a good fight. And we'll see what the judges thought. Will this take some of the luster off of Joe Macy's rising star, George? Oh, not at all. He's proven. I remember the first time they put me in the garden on the, uh, with a 10-round fight. <laughs> Peralta had me breathing and holding on. The crowd even booed me. When you get in the garden, it brings the best out of your opponents. It's not going to take any luster. I went on to be champion of the world. Twice. <laughs> The big right hands by Joe Macy, scored in the 10th round. Surely he and his corner hoping that those two massive rights were enough to win him the round. But again, Barrett was throwing more throughout the round. Harold, how'd you score the fight? <laughs> okay, Jim, six rounds to four, 95-93, baby Joe Macy. Jim, I got to tell you, from seven on through the end of the fight, Monty Barrett mugged him. I thought Monty clearly won the last four rounds. In the tenth round, he hurt him badly with about 30 seconds to go or so. So I thought Monty Barrett clearly won the tenth round. Yeah, Monty made it real close. The problem was he ran out of rounds. If this were a 12-round fight, Monty Barrett could have won it, but I thought he just lost the first six. Joe Macy has enough points to win it. Change one of those rounds on Harold's scorecard, and you've got a draw, 94-94. And once again, the three judges from New York State, Joe Dwyer, Johnson versus Montiel, a draw. That's not an overwhelmingly significant scorecard. Arthur Mercanti Sr. Scored the first Ali Frazier fight the right way for Joe Frazier right here in this ring. And Tom Shrek. Okendo, TKO3 eyes on. In other words, Shrek has never filed a scorecard as significant as the one he's just turned in here. You know, it was a good fight. Heavyweight fight. You don't see many of those. You only Not see heavy heavyweights are in the ring, huh? Yeah, I mean, but good fights. Heavyweights, one is generally on the canvas, or the other looked like he just came in for the payday. But these guys both fought. And both fighters scored clean knockdowns in the fight. If it was a draw, I wouldn't cry. Actually, Macy was on the canvas one other time. It was ruled a push. Had referee Michael Ortega seen fit to call that a knockdown. Barrett might be the winner now. Certainly, Macy now looks the way a fighter should look. With that left eye, a gargoyle. Once again, we point out that both fighters scored knockdowns in the fight. In round number five, 
it was Joe Macy who landed that clean right hand that knocked Barrett into the ropes. The ropes kept him up. Ortega properly called it a knockdown. Then in round seven, Barrett reversed the damage as he caught Macy with that left hook coming in and put Joe on the canvas for the first time in Macy's 28 fight career. And now, Jimmy Lennon Jr. with the official scores. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards with a majority decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Tom Schreck scores about 94-94, even a draw. Overruled by judges Joe Dwyer, who scores about 94 to 93, and Arthur Mercanti, who scores about 95 to 93, in favor of the winner, and still undefeated, baby Joe. A mixed reaction in the audience. Some approving and extremely happy with Macy's victory. Some ridiculing the decision, thinking that Barrett had overhauled Macy down the stretch. Final copy box numbers. Macy landing more and landing at a higher connect percentage. Barrett throwing more, particularly in the later rounds. Power punch numbers. Macy not overwhelmingly accurate but with his power punches neither for that matter was barrett very similar there in what was statistically an even fight and probably looked like a very even fight to spectators here macy winning the first half barrett winning the second let's go to larry merchant with the winner baby joe macy thank you very much jim congratulations joe was your debut at the garden a little tougher than you anticipated uh, not as tougher than I anticipated because Monty is a slick, evasive type fighter. Um, normally, I like when they come to you, and he doesn't really do that. Made me work for it, and uh, he's experienced, more experienced than I am, and pretty slick, so it caused a little trouble. Um, the first time you've been knocked down in a fight. First time uh, is this the first time you've got a a fighter's mouse over your eye? You look like you've been in a fight for the first time. I've had mouses before. I've never been knocked down before, but. Uh, you know, uh, first time for everything. I'm, I'm glad that it happened, and I learned from it. I got hit with something I didn't see. Uh, I got to learn to uh, concentrate a little more. My legs were a little weary towards the end, but otherwise my conditioning was okay. Your legs were weary, why? Because you've been punched more than you're used to being punched or because you haven't gone the distance? Probably because I haven't gone the distance. In, in the gym, you do 12, 15 rounds. It's different from being in the ring here. Uh, Monty's slick. You know, he's, he's very evasive. He moves a lot. And uh, when, you're, when, I'm, when I'm coming towards someone, uh, it was a little difficult, but my wind was good. Are you saying that you think having narrowly escaped here with your life, that it's a good experience as you move forward? I hate to say it, but I needed it. You know, uh, I need to go the distance. It's, you know, I need to get knocked down, kind of set you straight a little bit. Uh, I learned a lot from this, and you'll see me better next time. Do you think that in any way this uh, slows down the Macy Express? No, I don't think so. In fact, I learned from it. I'm a pretty knowledgeable fighter, and I will learn a lot from this. Uh, we'll keep the same pace you've been going. Thank you very much again. Congratulations, Joe. Tyler. Tyler, Jim? baby. All right, thanks very much. So Joe Macy remains unbeaten, 28 wins, no losses. George, you said at the top of the show you were looking for heavyweights who could respond well to adversity. Did baby Joe fill the bill? He did. He was knocked down, clearly knocked down, a clean knockdown. He got up and fought. Got his eye swollen. In trouble. Corner confused. He fought to the end. That's the kind of champions we're looking for. He filled the bill. All right. What about people in the crowd who think that Monty Barrett won the fight? Oh, you can always have them. They booed me in Madison Square Garden just because I went 10 rounds. Not because the guy won. They expect Macy to get a knockout, and he didn't do it, so boo. <laughs> All right, well, Live with it. we remind you that coming up in just a few minutes, you'll see another heavyweight battle. Vitali Klitschko looking to enhance his credentials to fight for the heavyweight championship against another fighter in the same position, Kirk Johnson from Lennox Lewis's native country of Canada. And a little bit later on, we'll also be showing you our year-in-review piece for what has been 
a fully eventful and tumultuous year of boxing on HBO in 2003. And as you watch the piece, keep in mind that you can log on to our HBO Boxing website, hbo.com slash boxing to vote for HBO's fighter of the year, upset of the year, fight of the year, and knockout of the year. We will keep the website question up until December 31 so that you can vote for the entire rest of the year and we'll give you the results of that poll in January. Meanwhile, next Wednesday, the debut of the next installment